Welcome to another video from EarnPen.com. I am Stevie B. Glad to have you guys with us as we talk about all things version update 17.4 related. Guys, do we have a lot of stuff to unpack today. So, let's go over a few things. First of all, yesterday we woke up and there was going to be a version update to 17.4. And it was kind of interesting because it was taking longer than expected and there were no release notes, which was very, very odd. Yes, we have plenty of smacks, fits, and sips for the haters today. So, it took several hours longer than expected to get the update in-game. They had some unforeseen problems. And usually when they do an update, they will also put out the release notes, telling you, you know, kind of what's in the update. But they were holding the release notes. So we knew something big was up. There was also a page on the launch screen, whenever you start Entropia Universe, that showed an RDI secret lab. Uh, an RDI lab is where the Divine Intervention ship was uh, found in Entropia lore. It's where the uh, Adjusted Restoration ship was discovered. Anytime the RDI is involved, there's usually really good high-end gear. They've got some high-end amps that are very valuable. So this got everybody very, very excited. Um, RDI stuff does not pop up in-game for no apparent reason. There's always a reason behind it, right? So, finally, after some hours, the servers did come back online with the update in it. I actually had to work yesterday, so I was trying to multitask. I was doing Entropia, then I went to work, then I came home for lunch, had to run through everything as fast as I could, had to go back to work, had to come home after work, totally exhausted, trying to get up to speed, and, you know, here we are. So, I get to lunch yesterday. And they had announced that there was a new mission that you could go to Fort Medusa and talk to the lieutenant that he would give you. So at lunch, I go to Fort Medusa, I talk to the lieutenant, he tells me there's some kind of an interference zone. I go to check it out. When you get to the interference zone, there is a jamming device. It looks like a satellite. Uh, I teleported in. I used a teleportation ship. So whenever I got there, I just ran left, probably about 50 yards, and uh, found the jamming device. And then you have to go talk to somebody who's the stranger that's not supposed to be there. There's a tent with a little fire with a stranger next to it. It's about 100 yards opposite of the jamming device. If I'd gone right when I TP'd it instead of left, I would have found it. So, go talk to the stranger. Long story short, the stranger tells you that there is a secret RDI lab. That the entrance to it is at that location. But it takes a biometric uh, lock chip to get into and the reason the lab was destroyed was they were making mutated calamazoids. They were messing with uh, DNA engineering, and something went wrong. Think a uh, Resident Evil-style storyline, right, where you're engineering stuff biologically and then it escapes. Um, so in order to get in, you need this DNA thing that is somehow in the calamazoid. So everybody starts hunting calamazoids looking for this blank chip. Well... There were people that were cycling thousands of pet on, on high-level calamazoids, level 40 calamazoids, not finding it. While I was at lunch, two people found it. While I was back at work for like another five hours, one more person found it. So only a few people managed to get their hands on it yesterday. So once you get the blank chip, once you actually get it to drop, which it does drop in loot, but it seems to be random. It seems to, to come in waves. Like you might have three drop in five seconds, and then you might not have any for two hours. Um, more or less like rare global strings or rare item drops, more or less. So it's the basic loot algorithm for Entropia. Um, once you have this, you have to kill Calamazoids between level 35 and level 40, I'm told, in order to turn it into a different type of chip, which will actually give you access to the lab. Now, the reports I'm hearing is once you have access to the lab, it is a team instance. So... It's kind of like Gauntlet, you have to have a team of people, and you all have to go in together. What happens once you're in the lab, I do not know yet, guys. I just don't know. I haven't seen it myself. Only a few people have done it. I'm sure more information will come as the, the weeks roll on. But once you're in the lab, obviously, I'm sure you kill some stuff. I'm sure you loot some stuff. And maybe there's some good stuff that comes out of this long term. But it doesn't seem to be a one-and-done thing. It seems to be something that you have to do over and over and over again. You have to collect many pieces for, and then maybe something good comes out of it. So, the reason I'm putting this together 
is if you hit H, if you look at the Hall of Fame, there's more than just the Hall of Fame for hunting, mining, and crafting. So let's hit H. I'm going to toggle over. This is uh, mining, hunting, and construction. This is what we're all pretty well used to. Then you've got kill spree and new items. So ignore the first one for a second. We've got Messi who found RDI designs in Sector A1. It's called Sector A1. That's the name of the lab, right? Um, then you've got G-Jack Bam who found high volatility fluid. You've got Raven Lunchbox. Uh, Lunchbox found an A1 safe key. And then we've got Newt Girl found a private lab key. So once you get that blank chip, you have to turn it. This is the blank chip right here. Blank Kalamazoid chip, sector A1. Whenever you find it, you have to kill other Kalamazoids. That turns it into the profiled Kalamazoid chip. Now the blank chip cannot be traded. The profiled one can. So the profiled one can be auctioned off. It can be traded. But that's the one you need to get in. What the safe key is, or what the private key is, I don't know. But it seems like, more or less, it seems like Messi found the blueprint. And then somebody found a key to the room. And then somebody found a key to the safe. It's like all these pieces go together, right? So this is why there's not like one thing at the end. It seems like there's many things that you have to get over and over again. And then put them all together to somehow get to whatever it is at the end. This is where I think Mind Dark screwed up. So, with Next uh, Island, whenever they did Ancient Greece, whenever they did the Gorgon thing, they told us about the Gorgon waves, and they said, you know, up front, look, there's going to be Gorgon armor parts that drop. You're going to be able to get these scales and fangs and upgrade them. It's going to be costly. It's going to take a long time. It's going to be for high-level players. But they told you what the end goal was, to get perfected Gorgon armor, right? They told us that. So, we don't know what the end goal is here. All we know is there's loot in there, and it turns into other loot. Um, so, there's a lot of players that are not going to want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars doing this in order to try and figure out what comes at the end of it. I'm sure it'll be something good, and I'm sure Messi or Lunchbox or, you know, one of the big names will be one of the first to have it. But it just seems like kind of a cluster of a way to release something. Um, the other thing is, guys, is it's not new player friendly at all. Uh, as soon as I found out that I had to cycle a whole bunch of Kalamazoids to go get the blank chip before I even knew there was a profile chip, I didn't even go to Medusa Swamp. Uh, that's where the high level Kalamazoids are. I hopped over to Lahar Swamp and started hunting the level 5s. It, theoretically, it should drop from any maturity, but again, it's a very, very rare drop to get that blank chip. Even if I had to skill it up and profile it on the higher level ones, I was going to try and get it to drop from a low level one because with mayhem right around the corner I can't pull out big laser weapons and just start hunting my heart out because I've got mayhem coming up in like three weeks. I'm already at the level cap. I can't just go hunt stuff willy nilly which is why I tell you guys don't do mayhem if you're not really willing to commit to it because it really limits what you can do in game. If it wasn't for mayhem I would have been shooting those level 40 calibers. So. I hunted for a while, I didn't get one, I found out how hard they were to get, and it seemed like it was one of those things where it was better for me to sit back and watch and see how it plays out. I didn't want to be the first person to discover stuff. Sometimes it's better to be the guy who watches how the wheel is invented and then duplicate it than it is to try and be the guy that tries to figure out how to invent the wheel in the first place. Uh, Bessie wants to be the first one to get everything from the lab and put it together, cool. Once I see what it is, then maybe I'll decide to do it. Maybe I'll decide not to. Um, so it's one of those type deals. It's definitely not new player friendly. Uh, the Kalamazoids do hit hard and fast. If that's what it takes to just get into the lab, I can't even imagine how big some of the mobs in the lab must be. I'm sure they're probably as bad or worse than the Gargan uh, event. I'm sure it's probably something where there's some level... 70 80 mobs in there it's definitely going to take a team and it's probably going to take nothing but high level players on the team in order to complete the lab so as of yet we don't know what's really in the lab but i'm sure that information will be forthcoming in the coming weeks and months so other than that what other updates do we have well something interesting happened they've been doing a lot of space updates and they haven't really said why they're doing space updates so in a previous version update 
they change the damage types that happen in space whenever you use space weapons. Uh, they also changed a few other minor things. Well, yesterday they did a, a few interesting things. Number one, they made it where a ship can actually hit an asteroid. Used to, you just flew right through them. Um, they also, without saying it in the patch notes, Bonnie found out they actually have now bridges between asteroids. So why would you put a bridge between two asteroids with what looks like a door? Well, it seems to me that they might be using asteroids for something in the near future. Uh, I know Granny, who owns the Cronin for years, has said it would be really cool if we could mine asteroids for unique mining loot. Maybe that's something they're putting in, maybe not, we don't know. But there is definitely a picture Bonnie has posted of two asteroids that are conjoined by a bridge, and it looks like there's a door on each side of the bridge. So that's definitely interesting. Also, RK5 repair tools are no longer RK5s. Used to, we had RK5s and RK20s. So the new one that everybody would use right off the bat was RK5. And the one that you used, if you wanted to use the more advanced one that had much higher decay, much higher uh, wire consumption, was the RK20, right? Well, yesterday, all of our RK5s magically be became renamed RK0s, and all the RK20s became renamed RK25s. So this led me to believe that somebody would find a blueprint that would have a new number on it. So either some levels in between RK0 and RK25, or maybe something beyond an RK25. Well guys, it happened this morning, and of course it was none other than John Black Knight. He discovered vehicle RK35 limited, blueprint limited, were 10 clicks. So this means there is now a repair tool that can be made that is actually bigger than the RK-25, what we used to call the RK-20. So I'm assuming it will have even higher rates of decay. I'm assuming it will have even higher rates of wire consumption. But for players who have been stuck skilling in the high 50s, low 60s, mid 60s VSE for a very long time, this will be very helpful. People like Mama Bunny, who skill and skill and skill, and it just seems that their skills have ground to a halt because when you get to level 55, 60, 65, the skills are so slow, even with an RK20, this seems to be the answer that my dark has put out there. So it would also make sense in doing this that they're going to make some kind of intermediate uh, repair tools, maybe like an RK10, an RK15. Um, I don't know how they're going to do the new numbering system yet, but it would make sense that they would have something between the RK0 and the RK25. Now we know there's an RK35. There might even be more. There might be an RK30 and an RK40 waiting to be discovered. So there's lots of new stuff happening there. Uh, the reason they're doing that, obviously, is to help people that are repping. Because whenever you repair, you're causing decay, you're using wire. Those are things my dark likes to see. We've seen an increase in the number of rippers over the past year and a half, I believe, uh, quite drastically. The other thing is, with all the changes coming to space, I think what we're going to eventually see is... Hey, look, it's wild. Shout out to wild. Um, I think what we're eventually going to see is that PvP in space gets redone. It used to all of space was PvP lootable. Then they brought it back and they said, okay, 90% of space is PvP lootable. We'll, we'll make a very small safe area around the planets. And then about a year ago, what they did is they said, uh, you know, we're going to make space lootable, but only in the middle and only a very thin band between planets. So, like, probably 50% of space is lootable, but usable space, the space people are in, is like 99% of space is non-lootable. Uh, because most people don't fly in the middle, most people fly around the edges, which is mainly non-lootable with very, very thin bands. So I think what we'll see long term is they are going to redo space PvP yet again. They are going to make it where it is more of a lootable area. They are going to try and increase the amount of PvPers that are in there. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we're seeing all these changes to the damage types in space. The fact that vehicles can now hit asteroids. Uh, all that stuff is going to come into effect, as well as the new VSC tools that are coming out. So lots and lots of good changes. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with the RDI lab mission. That one I was kind of disappointed in because of the fact of it's not new player friendly at all. It's honestly, guys, not even casual player friendly. 
Um, it's more of uber player friendly. And that's not something that's necessarily a good thing. It's also not necessarily a bad thing. It, it's just not something that everybody can participate in. So it kind of makes it that, that one for center club type deal. Um, also, guys, as I was getting ready to record this, I hopped on this morning and lo and behold, there's yet another new screen on the launch page for an RDI backpack. So the RDI backpack, I can't get any information because I can't click it, but it's a backpack. It looks like a jetpack. And all it says is RDI backpack stats increases carry inventory capacity by 50 kilograms. Then under that, it says upgradable. So I'm assuming this is something we will be able to purchase directly from MindArk. It will probably be something we can get in the web shop. Um, how we upgrade it is yet to be seen. This could be a very good thing for people who are miners. It could be a great thing for people who are hunting and don't want to make a lot of trips back to storage. Um, right now, my carry weight is 343 kilograms. Now, obviously, I can increase that by scaling melee. But again, I'm limited in how much I can skill melee because of mayhem, right? So this could be something that could give me a little 50 kilogram carry boost uh, without having to go through the melee skilling to get the strength to do it. So this could be yet another moneymaker for my dark and yet another good thing for players in general, depending on how it works, depending on how you get it, depending on pricing. I don't know anything else about it other than what's on that launch screen yet as of now. So guys... That's kind of everything we currently know about uh, version update 17.4. Seems to be a fairly decent update. I personally, even if I don't like the fact that not very many people can do it, even if I don't like the drop rates on the chips, I do think it's good that my dark is actively trying to put in new things into the game that get players excited, that make players want to do stuff like this RDI mission, because A, the Ubers are out there cycling their money to, to do this stuff. We're going to find some good stuff as a result. I guarantee you, when whatever all these pieces are gets mixed together, it's going to be some really cool item. It, it could be a weapon, it could be a chip, who knows, but it will be something cool. But it also shows that Mindark is staying on top of development. They're trying to make the game worth playing. Um, that is really historically a good thing because if the developers quit working on the game, then it just dies. Uh, I do wish my dark would pay a little bit more attention to what the players actually want and need. There are plenty of things that are actually broken in game that need to be fixed. Plenty of things that need attention paid to them. Uh, we didn't necessarily need a secret IDI RDI lab. We needed some other things. Uh, we didn't exactly need a bridge between asteroids. We did need some things in space fixed desperately. We didn't even necessarily need new repair tools. We needed other stuff more. But, you know, it's kind of a step in the right direction. So I, I really love the things that my dark has been doing with the game over the past year and a half, past uh, 18 to 24 months. I think the new CEO's really got his head out of his ass. So that's a good thing long term for the game. So guys, I'm super excited. We had that uh, new all-time high, the number two biggest hunting loot ever in Entropia, just about a week ago now. So there's a lot of really, really good things happening in-game I'm really excited for. One thing I want to see is how does Merp wool drop? Uh, so I haven't said this in a video yet. I'll go ahead and do it now as I wrap this one up. Merp wool drops from Merp. As you kill Merp, every now and then you get Merp wool, just like you occasionally get Exoswore wool. And it was not dropping well with the last version update. Uh, I actually need a crap ton of it. So if there are any Stevies out there that have Merp wool sitting in their storage, hit me up. Uh, shoot me a private messaging game. I'd be happy to talk to you about buying it. Um, obviously, I'm not going to pay a scout price for it. I can wait. I'm very, very patient. But Stevie is currently in need of some Merp wool. Uh, probably going to be that way for about a week or two after that. Probably not so much. So if you're watching this after Halloween Mayhem starts, disregard. But if you're watching this on October 14th uh, to October 20th and you have Merp wool sitting, sitting in storage, hit me up. I might even do a video about Merps later on because everybody likes Merps, but nobody likes getting Merpies. Nothing worse than going on a blind date and you wake up the next morning with Merpies, right? Nobody likes Merpies. So guys, I'm going to leave it right there for today for EarnPed.com. I've been Stevie B. If you guys uh, want to help support us, hop on over to EarnPed.com because when you earn, we earn. That is the best way to support us. Guys, we have a player that is going to be getting 1100 ped this week because he simply completed offers on EarnPed.com. 1100 ped being paid out this week to a player 
who just completed offers on EarnPen.com. He's been at it less than three months total. Guys, that's 110 US dollars. If he can do it, you can do it. EarnPen.com is the best way to earn and learn because when you earn, we earn. And the thing is, guys, we pay 50% more for those yummy, yummy hideout points than anybody else. Uh, that was meant to be a short-term promotion, but it helps the Stevies out greatly, so we've kept it long-term. We have no plans to do away with it anytime soon. Uh, hopefully, we will have some new sponsors coming for you guys. We'll have some new offers coming in the coming weeks and months. Right now, I am just stretched super, super thin when it comes to time, but I am doing my best to stay on top of everything uh, between real life and game and pumping out content. So I am doing my best, but stay tuned for those new offers, new sponsors. There are some things in the work that you guys will absolutely love. We'll leave it there for today, but we will be back with more great content for you very, very soon. I will probably put out another video later today, possibly tomorrow, that you will want to see, especially if you're a new player or an up-and-coming player. Uh, I would say mid-level or lower, you should be able to benefit from it. So guys, for EarnPad.com, I've been Stevie B. Sip, sip, smack, smack, fuck the haters. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care, Stevies.